We're going to start with an introit. So shall we turn to hymn number 705 in the celebration hymnal? 705. Remain seated. We come this day to worship our God and Savior. Just a minute ago, I heard the youngest member of our congregation making some noises. I'm brought back to what my mother told me. She'd gone off to Graceland. She was off, she was okay, and she came home for Thanksgiving. And she had not been homesick until she went to church and heard a babe make some noises. And at that moment, she knew what she'd been missing. She'd been missing the entirety of the congregation. And that babe is an important part of our congregation. And we need it, and it fills my soul to hear her voice, her love for Christ. We come this day to worship our God. 
my sin. Oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. Shall we turn to hymn number 358 again in this uh, celebration hymnal and uh, rise for the invocation? 358. Almighty God, thank you for gathering us together. We've come to this sacred time to rededicate ourselves in humility to the calling that you have given each one of us, to the repentance that you have caused in our lives, to the response that we have made to you the promises that we have made to you. 
the desires that we have to continue to repent and continue to grow, to continue to become your servants, your people, to be able to worship at your feet and fellowship with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us into this. Thank you for establishing this, what we may consider tradition, this deeply spiritual time, deeply spiritual, personal dedication to you, with outward signs, also with the fellowship together, together renewing our covenant and enjoying that covenant, being aware of that covenant, living out that covenant. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless this covenant again among us, that we might truly be dedicated to you. And Heavenly Father, it's in our hearts to thank you again for providing this communion with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, sometimes I think we, yeah, we understand the significance of this, but in reality, when we reach forth to partake of the bread and of the wine, this is just as important as any other covenant we have made with our Savior. Yes, we were baptized, and that baptismal day was an important day. The gift of the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands was an important day. Our marriage covenants are important days. This is a solemn thing. And it is just as important as any of the other covenants we have made with God. Because when we do this, we do certain things. And witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son and always remember him and keep his commandments which he hath given them that they may always have his spirit to be with them. That's what we're witnessing before God when we partake. This is just as much a covenant. It's a contract before then. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this. We're asking something. And so this is a contract between us and God. And then is our promise that there we are willing to take upon um, us his name of his Son and always remember him and keep his commandments. This is the covenant that we enter into today. Shall we turn to hymn number 83, again in the celebration hymnal, for the preparation of the bread and the wine that we might receive of the gift in front of us.
much as possible until we heal. Son Jesus Christ to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy son and in witness unto thee O God the eternal father that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy son and always remember him and keep his commandments which he hath given them that they may always have his spirit to be with them Amen. O oh God, the eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O oh God, the eternal Father, that they will always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen.
Um, this morning, I'm getting dressed. I'm just gonna sh- just gonna share with you what happened for me this morning. This morning, I'm getting dressed. It's Sacrament Sunday. This is white shirt, dark pants, dark jacket day, because that's what we do on sacraments, for the most part. I'm looking in the mirror because I never get my tie straight and that kind of thing. Looks like I'm going to a funeral. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm not going to a funeral. I'm going to a celebration of life. Why am I looking like I'm going to a funeral? Why am I wearing dark? I'm kind of of the school that Fiesta, and we go with colors. And most of you know, I, when it gets warm, I like to break out the Hawaiian print shirts. But in respect to those who struggle with some of my taste, and not to be offensive on this occasion, because Roland said, this is a solemn occasion. It's a solemn occasion, but it's a joyous celebration as well and it's on us to keep that all where it needs to be kept and then I was reminded that there is a funeral as well the funeral is for the killing of self myself is a carnal, sensual, devilish man who is very self-centered. I want to do what I want to do. 
I want to do it how I want to do it, and I want to do it when I want to do it, and I don't want to be bothered by anybody else's details. I don't know if that sounds familiar to you in your life or not. That's up for you to decide. But in the killing of self, we have to look at ourselves and see what am I doing or what am I failing to do or whatever all that is. And in that process, we have to be very careful that we not allow the adversary to enter in and say, see, I told you you couldn't do it. You've confessed that sin every month for the last, or whatever timeline, for the last however many times. See, you can't overcome that. You should just give up. And that is somewhere not to stay. Because the celebration of life that we just participated in overcame that too. I really appreciate the songs that Roland picked this day. Oh, the bliss of that thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole was nailed to the cross. And that's where it needs to stay. Because the man that was nailed to that cross, Jesus Christ, the way that I understand atonement took the whipping for me. When he had no need to do that of his own self, but out of his love for the soul that his father created in me and created in each and every person that has, that is, or will walk the face of this earth, He took their whipping if they will accept it. And that's our struggle is the understanding of the accepting of that gift that is extended to each and every one of us and the proper things of our repentance and our continual getting back up and walking with the Lord. I think the Lord is way more concerned with our refusal to get back up when we fall than he is our falling. Not that he takes joy or anything and is happy about our falling, but it's much more offensive to him in my understanding and my opinion when we refuse to get back up when we fall. And so today... I ask you to invite the Lord in in those moments when you need to look at your life and find out what parts of it need to be slain so that we can, you and I can be his people, that we do it with him, not in and of our own strength, because our own strength is not sufficient. It goes all over everywhere in that. And then when we've got the funeral out of the way, let's celebrate the life that has been extended to us. For truly we have experienced that here this morning in the peace and calmness and stillness of this sanctuary. We got some wonderful little children bringing some noises in and everything, and that's life. Accept the life that is extended to us. Kathy, I'm going to change the hymn on us. I'm going to look up the number right now. I think we all know it. Joy to the world. Yeah. 
Yes, 124. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. An important thing before then. This is the day of the offer of, of oblation that we do. It is also other offerings we do. And you know, that oblation can help. It really can help. This year, um, find with our insurance and the way it is that our insurance costs us about 40% between the time we do insurance deductibles and insurance, about 40% of our income goes to our medical expenses. And the first part of the year is when all the deductibles hit. And at the same time we had some car repair or something we had to come up with And I had to turn to Bill and say, Bill, I need a hand. This oblation's here not just for oh, only if you ever have huge problems. It's also there sometimes we need a little bump. And yeah, we, we got us some money back, and my personal opinion is we need to pay it back in, tithe, in, in oblation, and we have been doing that. Because it wasn't very shortly after there, we had several big paychecks hit all at once. But this oblation is there to help those who are in need from time to time. And all of us can find ourselves in need from time to time. This is one of the ways we can help those who truly are needed. Brother Bill, will you come forward? You want to pray? Oh, Heavenly Father, indeed we uh, recognize that we are all beggars, that you have given us all that we have, and as we try to um, remember how much love that you have poured into our lives, how much care that you have given to us, how many people that you have brought into our lives. We do just praise your name and thank you for it. But as we try to return a portion of that that you have given us, we do ask that you would indeed bless the givers and even the gift that it might be uh, more able to do what it is supposed to do. Even as we try to be your people in that uh, all that we say and do rather than just say. So bless this offering, bless the people. We pray in Jesus' name. Shall we turn to hymn number 124 and sing it like we mean it in just the regular hymn book? Joy to the world.
Oh, Lord, our God, we come before you now with thankful hearts for the blessing of the gift of your Son, for the joy and the chance to come before you now and praise and honor you for it. Oh, Lord, we plead before you now that you would make your face to shine upon us, that the way be, may be lightened before us this day to bring that we might follow you and bring honor and glory to your name. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is worthy to receive praise. In whose name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.